this is the module we're going to repair. We're going to replace all the electrolytic capacitors and um, power transistors. As we can see here for the PNP type they use a 2N6609 and for the NPN a 2N3773. There are four transistors shorted here on this module and we're also going to replace this trim pot here which I don't trust anymore after over 30 years. The wiper contact is surely corroded. These are all the parts we're going to replace except for the driver transistors in the TO220 packages which are still good. Here we see the module with the capacitors already replaced and the only thing missing here is the trim pot. The insulators for the power transistors which I decided to replace as well. Now what I'm gonna do here is maybe not necessary but these are sockets and the power semiconductors are not soldered they are just pushed into the sockets and these sockets after over 30 years of operation I don't think they are trustworthy anymore they would need to be cleaned on the inside and maybe pressed together again with a pair of pliers inspect every socket individually and see if it really if the pin of the power semiconductor fits in tightly so that's the whole amplifier with the repaired module reassembled the module to the right I didn't touch. In the middle we see the four big DC bus capacitors. And to the left we see the repaired module with the electrolytic capacitors that we replaced. And the little blue trim pot which is a multi-turn uh, trim pot. That will allow a finer adjustment of the bias current. For the power transistors I used the MJ1500-4 for, for the PNP type and MJ1500-3 for the NPN type and the driver transistors are the SJE1490 and 1491 which are being reused. Now here's how I tested it. I used a dummy load of two power resistors of 4 ohm in series connected to the amplifier's output. Then instead of using the 120 volt AC right away I used a power supply. I uh, Actually two power supplies in series and for the signal, for the audio input signal, it's an um, Android app on a cell phone which goes to the input of the amplifier. Then the power supply is connected here and we will also need the middle pin. I adjust initially the power supply to just about 10 volts and check uh, they should be equally divided uh, it's 5 volt on each side then I cr increase the the power supply voltage that's a power supply with a current limit so nothing bad can actually happen here at least not to the power transistors we see on the oscilloscope the sine wave output looks not too bad there's just a little distortion in it and that's because the bias is not adjusted yet. That's the trim port for the bias current. If we move the wiper downwards, the voltage from collector to emitter will increase and we're gonna increase the bias current and therefore the voltage drop over the series 0 0.15 ohm resistor. This is where the test pad is and where I'm gonna measure with the black probe. There's almost no current at all through the power transistors. And the way I mounted the trim pot, turning it counterclockwise will increase the bias current and at one point the voltage drop over the 0 0.15 ohm resistor will increase.
there it is, the transistor starts conducting. I leave it at about 4.6 and we're gonna have a look at the sine wave output from the amplifier now to see if the distortion is gone. As we can see I turn the trim pot back clockwise and the distortion comes back which means the bias current is too low or inexistent. Zooming in a bit and doing the same thing again we see the distortion here and adding some bias current will remove that. Now what we're gonna do is we remove the power supply, we turn the bias trim pot back to the lowest current possible, so uh, we're gonna have distortion at the output, and then we try it with um, nominal AC input voltage. There it is, powered from AC, looks like a good sine wave with the distortion. I will turn off the amplifier and I will short again the amplifier's audio input and we're gonna adjust the bias with our trim pot. They recommend 4 to 6 millivolt. I just leave it here for now at 3.5 millivolt and I will check the sine wave distortion afterwards. So the audio input chart is removed and we connect our sine wave signal on the input again. I added a current probe here to see how the input AC current looks like, just to make sure there's nothing weird happening. So I think this is a good way to test the unit first without risking blowing up the transistors right away. Using a benchtop power supply with current limit, observe the output voltage signal, observe distortion, try to adjust the bias current, only then start the normal procedure as described in the checkout procedure PDF file for this model. Now I think we are good to go for a real test with nominal output power maybe. And that's about it. Yeah, thank you for watching and um, good luck with that repair.